is kind of, you know, he was like on one season of everything, one season of this and one season of Solly's career is kind of my rela like my relationships. You can have it for a little while, but you can't keep it. <laughs> But do you know what? Congratulations on your Lifetime Achievement Awards because now we can have a whole lot of babies everywhere also looking to aspire to something. <laughs> Thank you, Sonny. You are doing amazing work. Fucking keep it up. Actually, just for a little while, then quit. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. You eat when you make money. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bianca Legrange. And I'm David Johnson. And we're here at the Comedy Choice Awards, uh, the grilling. The grilling of a lifetime achievement of Sully Philander. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. I'm a, a part of the, the panel and I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. I'm only nervous because I'm scared about what they're gonna say about me. But I'm very honored and so grateful to be a part of the panel honoring one of South African's legends. I'm just gonna watch. I made him wear that outfit. I woke up like this. <laughs> <laughs> sensational and um, you're supposed to be an Oreo not eat all of them <laughs> my sister you have a big face we say gefrit your gefrit is groot my say bye bye groot when you wake up does the sun set I mean coconut cow's act is brilliant ladies and gentlemen she is a black woman in a black body, acting like a white woman in a black body, <laughs> making fun of white people in white bodies, getting hate mail from black people in black bodies who don't like anybody. No wonder she sweats when she blinks. Good evening, my name is John Lismus, I'm 47 and tonight is my last meeting of Comedians Anonymous. I'm giving up comedy and I'm going to come back as Mark Committee. Helen, Helen Banks. Uh, Mark, 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 Mark Banks. Mark, Mark Banks. I just want to send a shout out to Operati TV, a shout it out to all the people watching Operati TV. So currently I'm working on my own one woman show, it's called Matem Tem. Matem Tem is my nickname that my mom gave me and I'm touring around the country. I'll be in East London 28 August, I'll be in Cape Town 28 September, I'll be in Pretoria on the 25th of October, I will be in Nelspruit in November sometime, I don't remember when, and then I'll be making it all the way around back to Johannesburg next year 2020 where I'll be recording the live DVD, so watch this space. Hi everyone, my name is Lichem Simang. I'm at the Grilling of a Lifetime of... Uh, what's that guy's name? Who, who am I here for? Is it, is it, is it Mark Lottery? Riyad who? I think I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> hey! All right. <laughs> Township people, right? Black people, not you girls. Black people. We, we have this, this beautiful way of, of speaking. Like it's almost intelligent the way we speak. Did you know, sir, sir, did you know that we're the only people that can describe someone without really describing them? I'll give you an example. What's your name? What's your name? Kerry. Kerry, okay. Kerry, let's say you, myself, my sister, what's your name then? Tandy. We party with Tandy, we have fun with Tandy. Three days later, something happens. You're gonna come to me and be like, yo, Dude, did you hear what happened to Tandy? <laughs> I'd be like, who? And you'll describe her. You'll describe her to the T. No, man, Tandy, we're with her Parkers. She had a bubble dress, blue hair. I'll say, I don't know who Tandy is, but with that blue hair, she must get her life together. <laughs> then Bunta will come to me, you all told me, yes, sir, I was, I was. Did you hear what happened to Tandy? 
All she has to say to describe her is, I chomi. me. Oh, tandy, tandy, I'll get it immediately. Oh! something that you have, right? So on the panel, for those of you who can't see, Bianca, Bianca's the one who's appropriating my culture hard right now. <laughs> Bianca has really big ears, right? She has really big ears. So if I were to describe her to Bunde, I'd be like, Bianca man, Bianca, I was at Pakas. She'd be like, who's Bianca? I'll, I'll say man, Bianca man, Bianca. <laughs> there ladies is a real comedian. How's it guys? It's Coconut Cows here at the grilling of Sully Philander. It's gonna be funny, it's gonna be musical, it's gonna be crazy. So if you're not here already, come down here. But I see someone I know who's familiar. My mom. The, the real, the black. So what do you think about my comedy? I think it's fresh, it's new, it's unique. It's um, very funny. So I'm looking forward to this evening. <laughs> we got blacks, we got colors, we got it all guys. We're actually rainbow nationing it up tonight. Um, I'm the token white, as um, you guys might know. But um, when I did come here, I said to them, you know, please put the white people in the front so that I feel safe. Um, and they didn't do that because I see... <laughs> you know, because we know it's been a struggle for you, uh-oh, to come. Um, but it is, she's, 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 she's like, she's like the soccer team, Bafana Bafana, just, you know, great skill, but never score. Um, I love this game, I love this game. Bianca, you, you're incredible. Such a great vintage singer. <laughs> But you know, but of course, of course, if you did, you would never have time to do this gig. Uh, <laughs> it's funny because it's true. <laughs> like, I love you, baby. No, 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 I love you. I love you. This is all in good fun. Uh, but I'm not gonna keep it clean, so I. Lichle, wonderful girl, I don't know much about you. I'll leave it at that. Um, she's what we call in the comedy industry, open act. Um, I don't know if this is true, perhaps you can correct me, but apparently there was a rumor about you wanting to join the army. <laughs> And if you don't know, uh, know that, you've probably been living under a rock. We all know where a rock is. Um, it's the grilling of a lifetime this evening, and um, those ladies are amped and getting ready to take me on. But what they don't know is he who laughs last laughs first. I did, actually, what happened was I was in Johannesburg, I, I, you know, because I'm from Cape Town. And I was doing some theatre in Cape Town and then I came to Johannesburg and I was working in, a, in a, a club, Club 58 at the time, as a wine steward. And Terry Fortune, who is a drag artiste from Cape Town, 
and uh, with a difference because he actually sings himself. I was busy waiting and he was like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm waiting. He said, well, you're crying out loud. You're so talented. You're all these things. Come on, come on. Get you. Do you have a sketch? Can you come do a sketch in my show? So I did a sketch in his show and that took off. People immediately took a liking to me they can't, and they like my sense of humor and I developed a character called Rose September at that time and, and people went large, people went big on her and, and I mean I literally was one of the first, I think I was, one of the first comedians locally to, to break down that fourth wall, you know, really engage with the audience about them and me and, the, and you know, the world around us, I would say, just, just over 40 years, yeah. Yeah, I look good. You can't. There is no getting away from this. This is what good looks like. Oh, 58. Bad, bad. It's good jeans. It's good jeans. My mother looks really great and she's like 77 and she looks 42. So, yeah. I, I am that eternal 27. I have a lot of admiration for the comedians at the moment. I mean, well, first and foremost, and what is really great about the, the uh, Comics Choice Awards is that it's, it creates a community. We're an industry, and I, and I literally want to lay that at their door. I said, the Comics comic Choice Awards accomplish that. It feels like we're an industry, and we're an industry acknowledging um, what we do. And so that is amazing. And then to think that more than, I mean, you know, in the voting process, more than 300 comedians were, were involved in voting for the Lifetime Achievement Award. That's a lot of comedians. And, and you know, we've got diverse, we've got, um, you know, stand-up, and you've got slapstick, and then you've got political satire, and you've got, and, and a definite idea that South African comedians have built an audience. They've built an audience for themselves. It is, it is, whereas then, when I started, comedy was like kind of, oh, what's this? What are you doing? And stand up, oh, <laughs> this is funny. Now, it's a, it's a business. It's a, it's a industry. It's a stream. It's a great, you know, I, I think you have theater, and then you have comedy, and then you have film, then you have television, and you have radio. And I think comedy is, this is, this is where we are now. Comedy is strong. I think I love the way the, the comedians are so fearless. They just take on stuff. And parameters are constantly being pushed, I, I think, the whole time. I think we're literally about to step into, we've just come out of, I feel we're at the sort of closing end of that idea of those parameters around a female, and female comedians, and, and breaking down barriers there. That's about to translate into the, the trans community, the queer community. That's about to start happening as well. And that, so we're going to get that coming through as well. And then there's the idea about drag as comedy. I mean, I know uh, one of the leaders from Tabish actually studies drag at university, so, um, you know, uh, uh, their thesis, thesis on it, uh, their masters or something, I don't know how university works. <laughs> I know how the university of life works, you know, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think, I think it's strong. I think we could probably see more representation on, on local television, I think. Um, I mean, I, you know, I don't want to act like I know everything that's on television, but we probably can see a little more of that. But, but I, I think we could. I think we're looking good. I think kids can dream about a career in comedy. I think, and, and it's a possibility. And I think that's really cool. The, the hardest thing about it is to, is to just say that the, the weird part about it, about being a comedian, is all the insecurities and the doubts and then having to push yourself through those things. And, and you have to believe you're funny. I suppose. For me it works differently, because you get comedians and say, well, I'm being funny. I, I try not to be funny, I try to communicate. I just say things and it's my perspective on things and people find that funny. So I think it's a, it's a bit of, a, it's a bit of a, a, an indicator when you are the like, class clown or the, the family functions, you're the one telling the stories. But that's not a, that doesn't necessarily mean that's a career for you. Because, uh, you know, it's like idols. Your parents say, oh, you're a beautiful singer and you go to idols and then nations going do you not have people who care about you can tell you something terrible so, so it's tricky 
but the thing I would say to young people it's a nightmarish nightmarish industry comedy nightmarish and you will not have comedians admit to that but it is but the highs are extraordinary when you when you hit that note there is nothing like it there literally is nothing like it when you have got a room of people in the palm of your hand and they listen to everything you're saying and they're emotionally involved and they're amused nothing beats it there is nothing that beats it that live immediate thing it's a rush like no other and it and makes all that other stuff with it but you have to stay focused on it you have to think it's you can't want to go, I want to be famous, or I want to be... You have to go remind yourself. This is about the creative journey, the creative process, and the aim is to perfect that. Whether I end up poor or a multimillionaire. That is neither here nor there. I mean, it's a terrible thing to say, but it's neither here nor there. Because at the end of the day, you have to sleep with yourself. You know, you have to look in the mirror at 4 o'clock in the morning to wake up at 6 o'clock and go, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm living what I, what I believe is my passion. You know, it is a, it, I think, like, like in all, for most comedians, this idea that, that, that you can make people laugh and that that affected something, that, that, was, that, was, that was the thing that turned me on. And right from when I was a little kid, I, I remember my first improv was in the nativity play at school, uh, at Sunday school, and then I did some stuff in school. But, uh, um, uh, you know, the whole thing was, it was, it was a mantle that was placed upon me. I didn't think of myself as a comedian. I sort of started thinking, oh, Maybe I'm a comedian, but other people are going, you're a comedian. No, and because I suppose there wasn't an example, there was nothing for me to follow. I was kind of, you know, leading the way um, without that sense. Uh, and um, yeah, I just, I just wanted to entertain people. That, you know, I'm at heart an entertainer, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to act. I wanted to do the make-believe thing and everything. And. It, I suppose it was, it's luck of the draw. I was born with a sense of timing and the way I would address stuff. People found that amusing and, 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 and outspoken and stuff. So, yeah, I think, I think the thing about me is just that I, I tend to kind of say the stuff that people are thinking but wouldn't say because they kind of like, one doesn't say those kind of things. I say them and, and I think people appreciate that.